Come on, jump on your feet and give God a high praise in the building. Come on, is that all you can give him? Come on, give him a higher praise. I want for about 30 seconds you to charge this atmosphere up. Charge this atmosphere up. I need everybody that is expecting a miracle tonight to charge up the atmosphere. If you're expecting a double dose of the impartation, charge up the atmosphere. Last night we got our first dose. Tonight we're getting our second dose. And I want everybody that's ready to open up your spirit right now. Open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Hallelujah. 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 You can do better than that. Raise that praise up. Yeah. Raise it up higher. Yeah. Give God his glory tonight. Give God his glory tonight. Give God his glory tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Whatever you came in here with, lay it down through your worship. Whatever you came in here with, lay aside right now every weight. Lay aside every weight, every thought, every worry, every situation, and let God get his glory. Come on. Higher. Come up higher. 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 Hallelujah, God. Father, we praise you. Father, we adore you. We magnify you. We exalt you. Have thine own way tonight. Have thine own way tonight. Somebody need a miracle. Somebody need a breakthrough. Somebody need deliverance. Somebody need restoration. Somebody need an impartation. Impart your wisdom. Impart your power. Impart your anointing. Impart your love in somebody's heart tonight. Father, we praise you. We honor and adore you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lay aside your jitters and lay aside your fears and lay aside your worries and lay aside whatever it is and just tap in. Tap in tonight. Yeah. Thank you, God. 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 Come on. 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 Yeah. Higher. 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 For your children. Higher for your family. Higher. Higher. Get it at the Sunday, get it at the Sunday. Yes. Work it now, 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody need a real breakthrough. And it comes through your radical worship. Don't worry about who's on the left or the right. Don't worry about who showed up tonight. The fact of the matter is you showed up. And because you showed up, the Holy Ghost is ready to fill you up. All you got to do is grab, grab the hem of his garment. Grab, 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 grab. The Bible says the woman with an issue of blood, she crawled her way to Jesus. And she came up behind him and she touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if I would just touch him, I'll be made whole. Sometimes you gotta just touch him. 
You're waiting for him to touch you. Just touch him with your worship, with your mouth praise, hands raised. Touch him. Touch him. Touch him. Touch him. Touch him. Touch Jesus. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You sound a little bit ready. You sound like you're ready a little bit. Come on. Father God, release the oil in this atmosphere. The oil in the atmosphere. People that don't mind going crazy for Jesus and losing their mind. I want you to just celebrate right now. Celebrate right now. Celebrate right now. Because you get ready to get a word that's going to set you on fire. A word that's going to activate you. A word that's going to cause you to launch into your next level and to your deeper depths. And God is saying, just worship him. Prep your spirit for the word. Yes, God. 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 Yeah. Somebody's not ready yet. Somebody not ready yet. So for the, some, somebody came in here too burdened, too heavy, too worried, and I'm telling you how to get through it. When you praise your way out, not only do you come out, but you come out fully loaded. You come out with everything, not only that the enemy stole from you, but with stuff that you didn't even ask for. When God bring his people out, he bring them out with more than enough, with more than what they asked for, with more. And if you believe God, I dare you, give them 30 seconds of real, 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 real pride. Now see, Israel in the Bible, they have two alarms. The first alarm was before they went in. They would sound the alarm and the praises would scream and shout and praise and the music would go up before. And then after the victory, they would sound another alarm to let all the people know that God came through. Now, now, now guess what? That first shout was because you were going into and coming through. But this next shout means you coming out. Give him 30 more seconds of real praise. Now, 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 now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord. Some people don't realize how blessed they are. How blessed you are for God to pull you and bring you through tonight. How blessed you are to be in an atmosphere like this tonight. You don't realize how blessed you are. And I want to encourage you 
not to let the devil limit your worship not to let the devil talk you out of your praise not to let the enemy cause you to restrict your worship because you have a certain thought pattern I want you to lose your mind in Christ tonight as the messenger get ready to come as he gets ready to come because you're telling God it don't matter who's around me who's speaking over me as long as your spirit is doing it I can't wait to receive it and I want to receive all that God has for me that's it that's it that's it this is revival renewal restoration impartation and God can only deposit in a heart that has released whatever it is that's in it you got to be open to receive you got to be open 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 while the anointing is flowing now the atmosphere is charged now the hearts are fertile now the minds are ready thank you thank you God thank you God from Fontana California while you're standing I met this man of God about 14 years ago when I was singing and traveling as a singer and I would see him time and time in different events or the church services he was at. But one thing I want to say about this man of God is he a man of faith, a man of courage, and a man of truth. When he got wind that God was launching Spirit Field to build the children's church, the Holy Ghost pricked his heart and his ministry's heart and he said I gotta get in on that and him and his ministry his wife and his ministry donated a thousand dollars to that building out of nowhere he said where do I send it something is coming for your ministry and so what you're looking at is a manifestation of another man of God's faith helping us to build the project and so I'm going to introduce this man of God. I want you to give the Father a hand of praise as he speaks through his messenger, Pastor Samuel Casey. Come on, give God a praise as he comes. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a great praise in this place. Come on, if you serve a great God, come on. Come on, give him a great praise because he deserves it. Come on, don't he, doesn't he deserve it? After all he's done for you? After all he's pulled you out of? After every way he's made for you? After every trial he's seen you through? Come on, doesn't he deserve it? Come on, doesn't he deserve it? Come on, give him what he deserves. Open up your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. While you're standing on your feet, Father, we honor you. And we bless you in this place. God, we can't make it without you, God. God, we've tried from time to time, God, to figure it out for ourselves and We've discovered, God, there is none like you. None who can heal, none who can forgive, none who can sustain the way that you do, Father. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you for your love through Christ Jesus who 
sacrificed his life for us whereby we can stand in your presence and cry Abba oh God we ask a question tonight what manner of love is this that, that you keep lavishing it on us even when I'm not at my best God you, you still love me even when I keep coming up short God and you still love us and for that tonight God we say thank you God forgive us for every trespass and every offense against you. God, we've not always gotten it right, God, but thank you for the blood of Jesus, a God that washes away all of our sins, and we thank you tonight. Refresh and revive us tonight. God, God I need you. Oh God, even as I stand to proclaim this word tonight, God, I, I need you to do something in me, God. Oh God, while I stand proclaiming your word, God, I'm, I'm not so prideful, God, to, to think that I don't need, God, the same medicine. So do something new in me tonight, God. Do, do something fresh in me tonight, God. Bust out in this place tonight, God. God, we thank you and we honor you. Bless this great man of God and his wife and this ministry and its leadership, God. Continue to open up doors, God. Continue to meet every need, God. Continue to shower down your blessings, God. Continue to allow them to make an impact in this high desert, God, for your glory. And God, we thank you. We honor you in this place because you deserve our praise. Because when my back was up against the wall, and it looked like it was over. Oh God, you stepped in right on time and made a way. And God, for that we say thank you. And we honor you in this place tonight, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And amen. Come on, if you love him, just give him a hand clap of praise. If you love him. Hallelujah. To this great angel of this house, this shepherd, this apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ in these last and evil days, Apostle Hart, we bless you and your wife and this entire ministry. Thank you for all that you have done. And I, I, I'm just excited. Th this builds my faith as I watch what God has done in your life. This, this gives me encouragement to run on to see what the end's going to be in spite of. Amen. Amen. And two. Uh, New Life Christian Church, just wave your hand. A few of them brave the highway to come on up. We bless God for you. We're just three years young. Amen. And God is doing a great work in the great sprawling metropolis of Fontana, California. And I thank them for being here tonight. Love you. My wife is not here tonight. Uh, she probably just now landing in Oakland, California. She's at a conference for work. So pray her strength as she travels in Jesus' name. But I got one of my youngest daughter, my oldest daughter here tonight. Amen. I, I tried to get her to stay home because I've been dragging her to church for 22 years. And I'm just so proud of her. She just graduated from college. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do this for me. Do this for me. I, I, this is selfish. She's preparing to take her NCLEX um, for becoming a registered nurse. Already has a job. We fly out on Monday to go to Emory University in the city of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, to set her up. If, if you believe in the power of prayer, just stretch your hand towards my daughter and say, it's done. In Jesus' name, it's done. It's done, baby girl. It's done. It's done. And my mama in the house, y'all. Mama, wave your hand. Wave your hand. Amen. 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 Now that I've showed off my manners, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. So grateful for this time in the word of God tonight. I believe this is a specific word for someone in the house tonight. I don't know who it's for. Before I even read the text, let me give you the title of the message. Um, this is a word for someone in this house tonight. Um, listen to me. Don't waste your affliction. Don't, don't, don't waste, don't waste your affliction. Don't waste your troubles. Don't, don't waste. Get that in your spirit. Don't waste. Somebody's been going through and don't know why. Somebody has been struggling with some things and don't understand why me, God. But I come to tell somebody in the house tonight, don't waste your affliction. Look what 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, verses 3 through 11. In the New Living Translation, it says, all praise to God. 
the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. Comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same source or the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that as you suffer in, as you share in our sufferings, we also share in the comfort God has given us. We, th we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought it never, we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. Who's been there before? We, 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 we make it personal. I expected to die. But as a result, we stopped. I stopped. We stopped relying on ourselves. Oh, my God, tonight. And learn to rely on God raises the dead he did rescue us from mortal danger and he will rescue us again we have placed our confidence in him and he will continue to rescue us and you're helping us by praying for us then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety the word of God for the people of God. Father, move in this place tonight. We thank you for your word. You are the pot, I am the clay. Take my thoughts, God. Speak wisdom through me and freedom and liberty in this place tonight, God. Rest up on the hearts of your people this word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Tell somebody, don't waste your affliction. Don't, 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 don't waste. Don't waste your affliction. Don't, 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 don't waste it. Don't waste time. Don't waste your affliction. Don't waste your affliction. During this season of revival here, the Spirit Fiddle Family Church, I can't tell you how excited I am to be here and how blessed of God that I am uh, thanking him for being able to share this word with you. But I come to tell somebody tonight that there is a difference between victims and students. There, there, there is a complete difference between victims and students. Students complain about their problems. Victims complain about their problems, but, but students assess their problems. Victims play the blame game and students examine their, their present reality and try to figure out what is it about my life that, that's not lining up with you. God, victims are reactionary, but students are proactive. Yeah, they, they, they know that a storm is on, on the horizon. It, it, it can't be this good in my life that, 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 that we've got to begin to look out for how the enemy moves, but victims are fault finders. Everybody else fault, but 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 it's nobody else's. No, it's not. It, it's not the bill collector's fault that he call in your house. It's it's it. students focus on the real issues in our lives. Victims ask why me. Students ask what am I supposed to learn from this. Victims say I prayed three times, came to the apostle, and I rolled on the floor, rolled back to my seat full of anointing oil, but students say uh, his grace is sufficient. And if he does not move on my behalf, it's not because he's not able, but, but there's something that God wants me to learn from this. Victim says my needs are not being met because they're self-centered, but students say God shall supply all of my needs through Christ Jesus to tell somebody tonight there are some benefits from the, the afflictions that we have and we suffer in our lives but we must quickly determine tonight what side of the aisle you gonna be on are, are you going to be a student 
Are you going to be a victim? Allowing the, the, the things in our lives, the circumstances that we're going. Let me put a pin here. I feel it in my spirit. You're not the only one that's going through. You, you're not the only one that has ever had a problem in your life. You're not the only one that has ever gone through a relationship challenge. But here's the issue. Will you continue to be a victim of your circumstances? Or will you ask God, how should I learn to depend on you? Listen, there is a difference. There is a difference between students and victims. And if we're going to learn as students of affliction, I know you didn't sign up for this course, but this, this is not an elective course in the kingdom. This, this is a prerequisite in order for you to move where God is trying to move you in order to get what you ask. See, that's the problem. You ask God to do something in your life. You ask God to, don't ask God to revive you if you really don't want to be revived. Don't, don't ask God. God to bless you if you don't want some burdens. Don't ask God to pull you out if you're not prepared to pull somebody with you. So we've got to learn to be students of our affliction and Romans chapter 1 verse 11 says since I was invited and since I'm here let me impart unto you some spiritual gift so that you and I can stop being victims by what the enemy is trying to do in our lives and understand that God is doing something new in the kingdom. Uh, he, he's tied, the, tied those of us who's always asking from God when God has already done everything that he needed to do through Jesus Christ. He's given us the victory already. He's already opened doors. And the reason we haven't walked through them yet is because we are afraid to walk through them or we don't like the way he opens the door. So here it is. Here it is. What I love about this text, it's a wonderful doxology how it opens up with a formula for praise. You need a formula for your praise. I, I learned a long time ago, I can't borrow somebody else's praise. I, I can't hijack somebody else's praise. I, I can't yesha bowl somebody else's tongue. I got to earn mine from the stuff that I go through. I, I've got to be able to endure. I've got to be able to be able to develop my own formula for praise. This text opens up with a formula for praise, celebrating, acknowledging, and helping us see the benefits of what divine comfort looks like even in the midst of our affliction because we are living in a world and in a time where nobody wants to call on the name of God. We're living in a time where everybody was relying either on themselves or somebody else. But God is calling a remnant. God is calling a few of us who's tired of trying to depend on folks who keep letting us down, who's tired of trying to figure it out. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of walking the floor all night long, staying up when the God of Israel who neither sleeps nor slumber is sitting on the throne and Jesus, my advocate, is advocating for me. I want to learn as a student why I'm going through what I'm going through, how got in the position that I got in so that I can become a benefactor of the afflictions in my life. I, I don't know who I'm talking to in the house tonight, but somebody's going through something. Some, you, you, you have suffered some things in your life. You're in the midst of a storm right now, and you smiling, and everything on, ain't all right. You, you're crying, and don't nobody see the tears. You on your way to work, and you decide, you don't know if you want to drive off the road or... or, or you, you, you're going through and don't know why you're going through. I come to tell somebody today, ding, ding, class is in. This is noting for us that if we're going to get something from the affliction in our lives, the first thing I want to point out in the text, what, look, look what verses 3 through 4 says. It says, all praises to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father. Underline this in your Bible, highlight it in your tablet. The source of all comfort. Here's the part that you're not going to like. He comforts us in all our troubles. You missed it. <laughs> I, 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 you see it, sis, right? 
not out of your trouble. <laughs> so, somebody waiting for God to pull him out. I, I, I come to tell you today that, 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 that the first thing I want to tell you about the text, affliction draws us closer to God. <laughs> that, that God is not going to pull you out because if he pulls you out too soon, my pastor, Dwight, my, one of my buddies, Pastor Dwight Ratcliffe, talks about faith is like uh, making a cake. You've got to make sure you put all of the ingredients in. And I remember when I was a child, I would always go up to the oven and, and ask my grandmother, is it ready yet? She, she says, no, baby, you, you, you know, after you have licked off all of the spoon, cleaned the bowl, look, I, I, I want some of that yellow cake with, with, the, with the chocolate frosting, I, with, 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 some, with some walnuts on it. I, I can't wait for it to come out. My grandmother says it's not done yet. And, and, and if you keep opening up the door, it's going to take longer. And the cake is going to go flat. The reason God can't pull some of us out of our troubles just yet because the fire hasn't gotten hot enough yet to burn off everything that you don't need. In oh, 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 you're going to play tonight. He, he, he's trying to burn off that, 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 that man. He's trying to burn off that woman. He's trying to burn off those leeching friends. He's trying to burn off that sickness in your mind. He's trying to burn off that, that hate in your heart. So he doesn't pull us out. He deals with us right in the midst of our troubles. Text says that he comforts us in all. Okay, what kind of trouble you have in your life? Look, God is not going to pull you out until the trouble has perfected you. <laughs> And, 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 and some of us have asked God to do some things in our lives. Listen, he pulls us closer to himself rather than distinguishing himself from us. Some of us believe God has left us. But the reality is if you're going through right now, you've never been closer to God than you've ever been in your life. Here's the problem. You got a victim mentality. See, your shout and your praise is not for the sanctuary. Amen. Students know that he deserves, that's why the text opens up all praise to God. No matter what you're going through, you still must praise God. And it's better to praise God while you're in your trouble than it is to praise God when he gets you out of your trouble. Do I have anybody in the house tonight that's ready to praise God in all your troubles? I love what the text says. The text says literally he, he, he comes alongside us. It's, it's the same word used in John chapter 14 where Jesus said in verse 16 and verse 26 that, that, that I'm sending you another comforter. I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. I'm not going to leave you. Jesus ain't like your friends. Jesus is not like your family member. Jesus is not like your Snapchat friends. He's not like your Facebook buddies. He's not like your Twitter sphere. But, but Jesus says, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. In other words, he says, I'm going to send the paracletus, the paracletus to come alongside you. Uh, there's nothing like the Holy Ghost. When I'm in trouble... He wipes away my tears. When I'm, when I'm going through in the midnight hour, I, I, I just tell him, Lord, just let me know that you're with me. He comes alongside us, not outside of our trouble. I need God when I'm in trouble. He's, he, says, he says that he's the God of all comfort. Father of the Lord Jesus Christ who comforts us in, in our affliction. Here's the second thing I want you to see in the text. Verses 5 through 7 is for the more we suffer. Here's the caveat. Not for, for yourself. Some of the suffering that we're going through is premeditated self-affliction. Uh, uh, now nah, 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 you're going to get quiet. <laughs> You know. Let me talk about me because I'm, I'm new here and I want to I, I wanna be fair. I would have more money, still probably have some hair, 
more room in my heart. If I'd have never went out on a couple of dates, if I would have never hung, you, you know how much money I spent on ooh-wee? You, I drank so much Old English, St. Eyes, Crazy Horse, Silver Satin, Night Train, Thunderbird, Great Kool-Aid, Cisco, Gin and Orange Juice. Oh, 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 that's rock gut. Y'all sophisticated. I, I, I've had so much Crystal and, and Remy Martin, Hennessy from the 15th century. No, no, the, the stuff I was going through, I couldn't get sophisticated with it. The text says, look what the text says. He, 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 we've got to learn how to allow God to comfort us in. But the more we suffer, I'm not suffering because God doesn't have a plan for my life. Here's the second thing I want you to see in the text. Not only does it draw us closer to God, but, but, but affliction equips us to minister to others. Listen, th there is no class that you can go through that's going to teach you how to have an anointing in your life devoid of affliction. I don't care how many conferences I go to. I don't care how long I stand in line waiting to get a hand laid on me. You want to go higher in God? You want to deepen your relationship in God? You want to be effective when you walk in atmospheres and stuff got to get right because you walked in the room. Suffer for Christ. So, some of us are suffering and no one is benefiting from our suffering because the more we suffer for God. The text says he will shower us with comfort through Christ even when we are weighed down with troubles. You, you know why you're going through in this season? God has put the spotlight on you. And he's put a spotlight on your life because it's, ti it's, it's time for you to stop having a private anointing. It, it, it's time for you. You, you know how we, you, you, we were when we were little. When we were little, we would get home and rehearse what we saw in church. And we would line up our stuffed animals and we would line up our Barbie dolls. And, 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 and my daughter Courtney used to be the pastor of the church. And, and my daughter Court, Samantha and Tamia would usher. They had a choir. They had a microphone. And they would act out everything that they saw in private. We're no different. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, it's time to stop playing. Young folks say it this way. You, it's time about to be about that life. You, you, it, it's time, uh, time out for us having, lining up our stuffed animals in private. And then when you get into a real situation, there is no anointing on our lives to handle the affliction uh, that God is using to grow us up. That was for me. And deliver us from folks in the church who want to do ministry with thin skin. You, 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 you wanted the microphone while you tripping when stuff comes your way. You wanted the title. You wanted the assignment. And as soon as a problem comes your way, I, 
didn't ask for all that. Soon as the real enemy shows up. Thank God for my daughter this morning. It was a ride in in the car this morning. She says, Dad, I get this daily scripture on my phone, and today's scripture was Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and principalities in high places. L here's the problem. We're too busy trying to fight folks who are on the same team and not fighting the real enemy. Because we never hear this. The reason God has turned up the fire and the affliction in some of our lives is because he's trying to equip us. It's time out for Mr. Rogers, uh, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood kind of ministry. Now, it's time. Ministry is not Disneyland. Ministry is not Universal Studios. Ministry is not a walk in the mall. Ministry is hard work. Ministry will cause you to lay on your face at nighttime. Ministry will cause you to have to pull on things in your life that you never thought you would do. Because God is trying to prepare us to minister to a generation that wants to have nothing to do with our God that we have a generation of young people they don't it's just that they, it's not that they don't want God they just don't want the ineffective of God they seen you handling tell your neighbor quit wasting your affliction because the text says that we are in this together but when we ourselves are confident, we will certainly comfort you. Here it is. You never suffer alone. The reason you are suffering and, and experiencing the affliction, let me talk to Sam for a second. This revival's for me. Let me impart into my own life for a minute, Apostle. It, let, let me have a conversation with me, myself, and I. And if you just so happen to listen in to, to my schizophrenic moment with me, God bless you. Let, the reason, Sam, that you are experiencing the things that you're experiencing, the things that you are going through, is because God wants to do something different in your life and he's put you on display because he wants somebody else to learn something from your faith you're not going through for you you're not crying for yourself you're not going through that storm because of something you've done wrong God has done some doing something in your life because you've done something absolutely right it's because you've decided to put your faith and trust in the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ there's somebody looking in on your faith you got some voyeurs in your life. You don't know who's watching you at work. You don't know how your child is watching you while you go through. You don't know who's watching you in the church when they know what you've got going on in your life. And you still have the audacity to show up and lift up your hands and give God praise and run when the spirit moves you and sing your song and preach your sermon after all you've gone through. There's somebody looking in on your life. And the only gospel they'll see sometime is how you endure the affliction. Gandhi once said that I almost became a Christian until I met one. There's somebody whose faith is getting ready to be established. There's somebody's strength that's about to return. There's somebody's marriage that is about to recover. There's somebody's child that's about to come back to Christ. There's somebody that's about to walk in deliverance like they've never had before. There's someone that's getting ready to get their real joy back. There's somebody that's getting ready to get their peace of mind if you will endure your affliction. We never suffer alone. Affliction equips us to serve others. I won't say it. If you ain't never been through nothing, 
You ain't never endured a long night of your soul. If you ain't never had to cry all night long. If you ain't never had to call out on God and tell God at one of these prayers, God, if you don't show up right now, if you've never almost lost your mind over something, if you've never gotten a report that was just between you and God after re the report, if you've never had to cry, pray, and doubt at the same time, You've never had your heart broken to know what it's like to have to look at the person who broke your heart and say, I forgive you. If you've never had to bless those who you knew was talking about you. Look, miss me. Sh show me how to get through this. Show me how to stay close to God in the midst of my affliction. Show me how to look in on your faith. Show me how to be comforted in the midst of it. Because we never, tell somebody, we never suffer alone. Here's the third thing I want you to see in the text. Verses 8 through 10. I'm going to give it to you up front. So you can shout with sense in the text. Not only does affliction draw us close to God. Not only does affliction help us minister to others or prepare to serve more faithfully in ministry. But the third thing we need to know is it empties us of self-reliance. <laughs> Let, let, let me read what the text says. I, I love how Paul writes. He says, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. If you know anything about Paul's life, Paul was shipwrecked three times. Paul had to make it to shore on broken pieces. And I come to tell somebody tonight that if you're hanging on to a broken piece, God does wonderful things with broken pieces. Just hold on. He, he says, I, I, I've been in danger of my life. I, I, I've suffered hunger. I, I, I've had to run for my life. Let me tell you, we were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure and we thought we would never live through it in fact I hear you tonight Holy Ghost somebody in the building tonight expected and even wanted to die but as a result I stopped relying on ourselves and learn to rely on God. Why? He raises folks from the dead. And he did rescue us from mortal danger. And he will. See, somebody think God has stopped working. The text says, not only has he delivered, he will deliver. Because at some point in time, you and I have to take our hands off of it, back away from it, and learn to trust. You, you do know what trust is, right? It's, it's acting as if it's already done. And I move in the direction as if God has already completed what I've asked for. Because I've stopped relying. I, see, the problem is I know you, you, you got an education, you got initials, you have a title, you have an office with a sign. People, people serve you, people respond to you, people respond to your emails. And, and, and when you walk into rooms, you are honored and, and they usher you up to the front of the church. But what happens when you get in a storm? What, what happens when, when the lights are turned off, when, when you're no longer on the stage and the spotlight of the people are not on you? Are you still relying on yourself or? Are you relying on the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ who raises up dead situations? 
to tell somebody here today, God wants to raise something up in us so thoroughly, but we've got to stop relying on ourselves. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 and 7 says, this is what the Lord says, cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and their confidence. I know you got a little money in the bank and you cute and all that, but look, quit relying on yourself. I, 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 I know you got a group of friends. I, I, I know you've got some stuff that you've been able to accumulate in your life, but there are some things that only God can handle. There, there are some things in our lives that while we're going through, while we're experiencing sickness, while we're experiencing heartbreak, while we're experiencing depression, while we're going through some things, you're not just going through because God doesn't have anything to do in the universe. You're going through because God is trying to teach us to stop relying on things that don't work. And if you're going to be like me, I'm tired of not learning the lessons of my affliction. David said it this way in Psalms 119, I believe it is around verse 71. He said, it was good for me. <laughs> It was good for me that I was afflicted. It was good for me that you left me and broke my heart. It was good that I lost my job. It was good that they emptied out my bank account. It was good that I lost that friend. It was good that I had to go to the hospital that night. It was good that I got shot. It was good that I got stabbed. It was good that I went to drug rehab. It was good that I suffered some of the stuff that I suffered because David said because it taught me not to wonder from your word and I don't know how you feel about it today I need the word of God in my life for the word of God is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my pathway teach us Lord to stop relying on ourselves final thing I want you to see in the text and I'm done Verse 11 says something very instructive. And you are helping us. Grab somebody by the hand. Say, help me. I'm done here. If the musicians can come and play, I'm done. I'm done. No, 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 don't, don't let them go. Don't let them go. Don't smile. And, and, see, and see, what we do in church, we smile and laugh because we really don't want nobody to see that I really need help. business in the street. You know what it's like to be through, to have gone through something? Help me. You know what it's like to almost have lost your mind and decided that this is it. I'm walking away from God. This ain't working. Help me. Men, sometimes we have this thing that we can't cry. That we got to be strong all the time. Look, I'm, help me. Children are going through and have no one they can <clears throat> contemplate in suicide and sending pictures of themselves because they don't know who they are. Some young person under the sound of my voice, just lift your hand and say, help me. There's a mother in the room tonight. Don't know what to do about their child. Grandmother raising children for the third and fourth time. Help me. Somebody wondering if this thing does really work. Look what the text says. And you helped us by praying for us. 
Somebody needs somebody to pray for them right now. Because if you're going to be a student of your affliction, you need some help. You can't do it by yourself. If you're ready to get some help, who's ever hand that you're holding, bring them to this altar now. Bring them to this altar now. Come on, here, here's an opportunity for you not to waste your affliction. Don't waste your affliction. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Don't waste your affliction. Minister to someone right now. Even in the midst of your pain. Minister to someone else. You're closer to God than you ever thought you would ever be. Someone's looking in on your struggle right now. And here's the word of God for you tonight. You win. <laughs> Listen, you win. Tears in your eyes. Pain in your heart. Don't know how you're going to make it. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but it's the Lord who delivers this out of them all. We can look unto the hills from which cometh our help and know without a doubt and surety that our help comes from the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. The text says he will rescue us. And I know somebody's at this altar at the point where they said, look, I hear you, preacher. But it's hard. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know the nights I've cried. You don't know how many people I've been at altars before. I've heard a number of sermons. But I dare you right now. In the name of Jesus. To pull on your most holy faith. And ask God to do it again. Do it again in my life. Do it again in my life. God, I'm learning from my affliction. I know you're with me in it. I'm, you're, you're not outside of my problem. You're not outside of my pain, God. You're in the midst of it with me. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You're preparing a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And because of that, you're anointing my head with oil right now. In the name of Jesus, anoint now, God. Anoint now, God. God, anoint through the affliction, anoint through the pain. As their tears tabernacle on their cheeks, God, let, let them be a liquid anointing in their life, God. Move now in the name of Jesus. We cancel every doubt. We, we cancel every fear. We cancel every trick of the enemy. You will make it. You shall live and not die. You're able to run through a troop and leap over a wall. Your pain is perfecting. Your problem is producing more power in your life. It's not a burden that you're going through. The fact that you're still here and the fact that you made it through and the fact that you're here today is evidence that God is doing a new thing in your life. Shall you not know it? But it shall spring forth. Which means when you're not expecting God to show up, he's going to move on your behalf. And I declare and decree in this place now that the hold over your life from past mistakes, from shame, envy, jealousies, we destroy them now in the name of Jesus. Here it is, every high thought, 
that's trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of what you know about God. You have the kind of faith in God and the authority to pull down every stronghold that has set itself up against you. And we declare in this place now, you are healed, that you are strengthened, that you're more powerful than you ever thought you were. Even with the mistakes in your life, you're forgiven. And we speak life over you now. Young lady, you are more than enough. You are more than enough. You never have to compromise. You never have to lower your standard. T touch yourself and say, I I'm enough. I'm loved. <laughs> Listen, and I'm done here. Turn to that person and say, look, thank you for helping me. <laughs> Come on, we're we going to graduate together. And listen, Spirit Phil. Listen, listen. You have been wonderful students. No victims in this building, just students. <laughs> just students. Just learning from my affliction. I'm glad I went through now, Apostle. Glad I had my heart broken. <laughs> glad I learned how to call on him. Glad I know what it's like to cry while you're driving. And your tears turn to praise. I I'm, I'm glad certain folks left me. I'm glad certain things hurt me. I'm glad that I've experienced the things I've experienced. And here's why. I've learned to stop relying on myself and to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you tonight, Spirit Phil. Come on, you can do better than that. Worship the King. Come on. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Come on, say that as we get ready to dismiss. God has, say, smile on me, smile. He has set me free. He has set me. Come on, say that one more time. Say, oh, God has, smile on me. He's been good. Stretch your hands over to the man of God tonight. Father God, in the name of our Lord Jesus, Father, you have used him as a funnel, a vessel, to pour out your power, your anointing, your presence, your spirit, your words of life, of wisdom, and of strength. And every vessel here received a word that they're not victims, but they're students. And we have learned from the afflictions. And because we are learning from affliction, we are being elevated for your word teaches that, Father, we go through many afflictions, but you deliver us from them all. And we thank you, Lord, that the light afflictions that we're going through cannot compare to the great weight of glory that shall come forth. So, Father God, thank you for releasing that glory. Now we ask, deposit a hundred times over what he released out. Deposit it in his spirit deposited in his family, deposited, Father God, even, Father, in his ministry. And we thank you, Father God, that it's done by faith in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, Father, each and every heart that's present tonight, may you continue to build them up, Father God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that, Lord, the jar is three-fourths full. But after tomorrow, I see an overflow coming. I see an overflowing anointing. And I thank you, Father God, that as you're taking us higher and higher each night, Lord, we thank you, Father God, for the mighty, the mighty, the mighty anointing 
that shall flow even over till tomorrow. So we give you honor, travel, and mercy, and grace be upon your people tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. How many know God has favored us? Don't forget that we will be here tomorrow night with Apostle Iris Hailu, amen. We'll be here tomorrow night. Prayer start at 6, service start at 7. Impartation 2017, God is not done. Deacon, stand right here. Come on on this side. They over there praying. Come on. The Holy Ghost still moving at the altar. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Smile on.